Hi, welcome back to MRTV. Welcome to this world exclusive unveiling of the Immersed Visor. I'm super excited and I'm here with Renji Bejoy, the CEO and founder of Immersed. Renji, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, man, I'm so excited about this. So the Immersed Visor, your first hardware, it's kind of exciting, right? You, you're, a bit, you're, you're a software company and now you're getting into hardware. First of all, tell us why you do that. Yeah, uh, I was really trying not to get into hardware. <laughs> I <laughs> did sort of a, uh, a roadshow to all the different AR, VR tech giants to try to get someone else to build this type of hardware. Um, I even talked with Darshan from Big Screen to see if he would build right. this type of hardware because um, he announced that he's getting into his own hardware. And so uh, given the fact that everyone kind of have has their incentives and their um, agenda as far as what they need to accomplish for their business, makes sense. They couldn't really focus on a different journey, the journey that Immersed is on, which is to get everyone to work in AR, VR remotely together as if they were in person. It was just difficult to find someone who really believed in that vision in and of itself. Um, I even shared a lot of behind the scenes user data, user usage, and kind of built the case to prove to the, even the tech giants who believed, wow, this actually is very, very compelling someone should do this <laughs> and i was like yeah can it nobody be did it nobody did it <laughs> yeah I, I, what, what what a lot of them ended up saying was once someone proves this out you know if, if you guys prove this out if immerse proves this out then this is something that they could see themselves doing and i'm like okay well i guess no one wants to take no one wants to um take the attempt to run the four minute mile just yet and once someone proves it then everyone's gonna do it and so right. um I'm not going to name names, but one of the tech giants said, oh, we actually might come out with a version of this. Um, and so that being said, that doesn't really accomplish exactly what we need either, though, because there are certain trade-offs that they mentioned in that version of that headset that will be coming out actually year after next, uh, that it doesn't accomplish everything that we need for our users' use case. And not that we necessarily care about um, it's just having a headset that's created for the Immersed app. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I am saying is that the Immersed app so far to date, just in the past couple of years, has accomplished getting users to spend 1.2 millennia with a headset on in our app, right? So 1,200 years in our application. And I just haven't heard of any other application that has pulled that off. So that being said, I would even argue that not only is it one of the most used apps, right? Because, you know, candid, candidly, people are using it 40, 50 hours a week, every week. Uh, even some of the social apps out there, people are not necessarily spending 40 to 50 hours every week in those types of the apps. Um, my argument would be that this is probably the use case that matters the most because everyone has to make a living. Um, the vast majority of people during COVID started working from home using their laptops. And at the end of the day, if you can create a way to get people to adopt headsets through the vehicle of habits that they already have, you're going to see way more adoption. So that was my pitch. And um, a lot of people believed it. And they said, all right, well, as soon as you or someone else runs that four minute mile, we'll be right there behind you. So okay. here we are. But you had to do it. And that's why you came out with the Immersed Visor. So you have already made um, a video where you told people a bit about it. And let me just um, summarize that for people who probably don't know what is the Immersed Visor. So let's get into that for a moment before we get into the new juicy details that you're going to unveil in this video. So the Immersed Visor is a VR headset. It's a VR headset that is meant for work, right? Together with your Immersed app. So... It is um, a headset that is based on micro OLED technology, but with a very, very high resolution. I believe it's 4K per eye, something unseen until the, probably the, the Apple Vision Pro. So yeah, that, that, is, that is pretty exciting. Um, what else have we learned? It's, uh, it's, um, it's wired to your PC. You are supposed to be using this with your laptop or probably at home with your desktop. And it's, it is basically giving you um, screens. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a Steam VR headset. It's, it's really just for this use case for getting multiple screens in, in VR in the best quality possible. Did I summarize that correctly? What we know until yeah. now? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll add to that as well. Not only is it wired, it does have a wireless capability. So if you want to- oh, really? yeah, get up and whiteboard or go to your kitchen, grab something to drink, you could easily unplug it and it would switch over to Wi-Fi instantly. 
Um, oh, really? So, wow, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really excited about that. The, the thing is with, um, it, it'll still have better quality than what you get on currently existing headsets that are wireless. Like Immerse Today does work on the Quest Pro and the Quest 2 yeah, and like Eco that, 4, yeah. et cetera. And it all works wirelessly. Um, and still very high resolution and people, that's what they work in today, 40, 50 hours a week. So uh, the experience is only going to get better than that when it comes to our wireless version because of a couple of improvements that we're making. And then when it comes to wired, I mean, it's going to be imperceptible in regards to whether or not it's virtual versus physical. Wow. Um, and on top of that, I'll also add, uh, we are going to allow people to sideload other applications onto it. Uh, we're oh, just really? not going to, okay. yeah, we're just not going <laughs> to focus on creating an app store or anything like right. that. Um, just because we have to focus our efforts. We're not going to uh, block ever, uh, everyone else from being able to use the headset as a developer kit or whatever, whatever they want to do with it. Okay. We're going to keep it open. It'll be it'll work on OpenXR. Um, I'm sure people will figure out Steam VR integrations. Maybe okay. someday there's a world in which we can integrate with something like that. But as of right now, we're just focusing on our use case. Okay, cool. So there's modding, right? If you want to mod something onto the device, you can do so. Interesting. Yeah. And um, since it's... It's also being used wireless. There's batteries inside, I suppose. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of the things I can share today is uh, you'll see that it's actually taking a very similar approach to the Apple Vision Pro. It's not going to have an onboard battery. It's actually going to be a battery that comes off of the back of your head, kind of the corner of your ear, uh, into a battery pack that okay. can either sit on your desk or be in your pocket, similar to the Apple Vision Pro. Okay, cool. So... What excites me is that we can, what you just said, that you cannot uh, see a difference between a real screen and the virtual screen. You know, like, I really love your app. I tried it first on the Quest 2, and even there, I thought, like, wow, okay, this is good. Then Quest Pro, like, okay, now we're talking. But now, with this super high resolution, wow, I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited about yeah. it. So, so now we learned, okay, it's wired if you want it to be wired, but it can be wireless. And the device has probably inside out tracking built in. Correct. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to make sure that like, even when talking with Darshan on the big screen beyond, for example, uh, and like dreaming of, okay, what could a V2 of the big screen beyond look like? Is there a version of the big screen beyond that could work with immersed very, very well? Could we partner on this? Um, it was very clear that they wanted to limit their scope and it makes sense like, that uh, steam VR tracking is the uh, way they want to go. Um, and so for us, we realized at the end of the day, we do want to target non VR users. We don't want to just, uh, siphon off traffic from other headsets that already exist today, but instead, how do I attract my friends and my family as well to finally adopt an AR VR headset? Um, and the reason why I explicitly say AR VR or mixed reality is because it does have onboard cameras. It will have full color pass through oh, higher resolution. Good. Yeah. Higher resolution <laughs> than any other headset that's available today. And so, uh, it's something that it's a device that it's, it's my dream device is the, the device that my friends <laughs> and family want have always use. wanted. Correct. Yeah. And so for me, you know, candidly, I'm not even a, a an avid VR user as far as using other apps and games. Uh, I don't use my headset, my, my Quest Pro much for uh, entertainment or gaming. I use it mainly right. for work. I use it for immersed. And okay. so yeah, for me, <laughs> yeah, call me a different type of VR user, but uh, I'm trying to create a very, very light version of the MetaQuest Pro in a sense, but something that is highly optimized for work and also simultaneously de-optimized or just worse for other applications because that insinuates that we've made technical trade-offs that are optimized for work and thus not something that can weigh us down for uh, making sure that we have generalized use cases included. It makes sense because for generalized use cases, you can use the Quest 3, for example, right? But for, for work, then you want to have this perfect device that is really made perfectly for work. And this does excite me a lot because I see that use case so strongly. I want to use it. You know, I have all these AR headsets, X Real Rokin and stuff, and it's good and sharp, but I don't like the FOV. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't <laughs> like I don't like it. So I'm not using it for work. So I want this kind of quality, but yeah. with a the, with the bigger FOV. And it seems like your device is exactly giving me that. So, yeah, so, yeah. so, so talk, tell us a bit about, yeah. tell us well, a bit about the FOV and uh, what, what can we expect? It's a VR headset, right? So yeah. it's a VR um, FOV. Correct. Yeah. So oh, that's uh, good. yeah, the, the a requirement we have at Immersed, if you work at Immersed, you have to use the app, like meaning like you have yeah. to work in VR and we just, we can't expect users or other people out there to use our app if we don't use it ourselves. And so when it comes to field of view, for example, like I've tried the X-Real, I've tried a lot of the different AR headsets out there. Yeah, the field of view is just anywhere between 20 to 50 degrees 
and that's just not sustainable for if I have my multiple screens all around me. Um, but instead, you know, I, 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 for today's technology, VR headsets can get us north of 100 degrees field of view, which is over two to three X what you can get for AR today. So yeah, maybe five years from now, we'll have an AR headset that has uh, not only a high FOV, but also uh, very, very crisp and all the other trade-offs that you have some that claim a high FOV, but then they have other trade-offs as worse on resolution or whatever it is, or battery. Um, and maybe five years we'll have the best of all worlds there. But until then, we do have to stick to a mixed reality approach, I believe, um, because yeah, it, it, it's something that accomplishes all those goals today. And on top of that, longer term, it will not surprise me if there are both devices, but it also won't surprise me if Ultimately, people, I think Palmer Lucky says this all the time, that people won't really even care for glasses necessarily because uh, full color pastor would be so um, perfect to the point where you can't even tell whether or not you're wearing augmented reality glasses or mixed reality glasses. Okay, great. So in terms of FOV, uh, what are we looking at? Is it like Quest 2 or? Uh, 100 degrees field of view. Uh, we're okay. do, making a couple more improvements to try to increase that a couple more degrees. Somewhere, like I, I, good. <laughs> yeah, I'd like it to be somewhere around 102, 103, maybe 105. But uh, as yeah. of right now, what we can commit to is 100 degrees field of view. Um, likely it'll be a little bit higher, but somewhere around there. Okay, yeah, that, that is so much better than these AR glasses. Like this yeah. is so, this is such a huge difference. And for working in VR, that will make a huge difference. Exactly. So um, for the pass-through, it's color pass-through. Could you give us an, an idea, like um, how much better is it than Quest Pro? Is it better than Quest Pro? Uh, yeah, for clarity, yes, I'll say that. Okay. Um, I will say Meta has done a great job in regards to their software as far as pixel reprojection to make it feel like things that are close are actually close, All how right. your hand can include certain portions of it. But right. um, we are working with other partners, which we can't announce yet. There's start, we have to, we're, like there's a lot of legal implications of what we can and can't announce just yet. Even Got though it. there's a lot going behind the scenes, I have to get like actual approval to be able to say certain things. And so I want to reveal everything. Right, I right, can't of course. <laughs> because of legal, legal implications of working with other um, partners. But on the software side, I'll say Meta has done a great job on Quest Pro. Um, I'm sure the Quest 3 is gonna be amazing. You guys will see. Um, yeah. and when it comes to our color pass through, I'll say that, uh, when it comes to resolution and clarity, uh, there's nothing else on the market like it. Wow. Yeah. Tell us about the resolution. Can you share this with us? That I can't <laughs> just yet because there are some, okay. so I, I will say this. I want, I personally want it to be clear enough for me to be able to hold up my iPhone or Android device and be able to use my phone with a headset yeah. on. Um, so if that's my requirement, then you will see, um, over a 4x increase in pink, pixel density than, or, or rather resolution uh, than what's available today. Okay, now that is exciting. I can't wait to try it out myself. Um, tell us about um, personalization, because in your, in your first video, you did mention that you also were speaking with Darshan and you're going to have some similar approach. So, uh, so how do you personalize this headset for the people? How's it work? Yeah, so, yeah, so we will require a face scan. It's not because we need perfect, uh, you know, prevention of light leakage. We do want to make sure that it's a custom fit for people. Because I agree with the thesis that Darshan had mentioned, which is likely moving forward, people don't really care for sharing their headsets as they have the past decade for the next decade. Um, for us, it's not necessarily where, like, what moment in time do people not care about sharing VR versus having their own device. For me, it's more about how does this, this does this device. Um, operate alongside the host computer that it's part of, right? So our device is not a standalone VR headset. It is a per technically a peripheral that is an extension of your laptop. And so because the vast majority of people don't share their laptops, we don't believe that people need to share their headset if this is an extension of their laptop for the work use case and sp uh, specifically. So we will require a face scan because um, e even as you'll see on the big screen beyond, for example, they're able to achieve such a small, thin, sleek form factor because they don't have mechanical components or like a rail for the IPD to be adjustable. Um, they don't have certain uh, pieces of the hardware that allow you to adjust it to your different head shape. Instead, it's something that is meant for you. Likewise with us, when we take your um, face scan, you'll be able to, we'll be able to detect your IPD, we'll be able to detect your nose shape, we'll be able to detect uh, what is the contour of your face. And so um, we will be providing different uh, nose pieces depending on what your nose shape is. Uh, it will be somewhat flexible depending on where you want that to be on your nose bridge. Um, the face interface, the facial interface will be uh, not custom or custom molded to your face like the big screen beyond because we actually have 
a lot of users who don't even use their um, light guards for the MetaQuest Pro or some of these other headsets. They prefer to have it off of their face. And right. so, uh, but some people will want to also use their headset for watching movies at night before they go to bed, et cetera. Uh, and so for us, likely the facial interface will be something that is, um, it, that comes in a couple of different, not a couple, but a lot of different sizes and shapes, uh, similar to like the Apple Vision Pro as well. Uh, we've decided that we don't need to add additional complexities in the manufacturing process. We do want to get this into the hands of users ASAP. And so in order to do that, we don't want to have to um, worry about the complexities of perfect uh, lack of light leakage, if that makes sense. So if you have more questions for, uh, about that, maybe I might be able to answer some of it. All right, all right. So um, um, the face scan works similarly like uh, the Bixby Beyond face scan. You need an iPhone for it to do it? Yeah, because the iPhone allows us to get the highest fidelity version of it, right? So that's the right. hard part. Um, either you or your friend um, who has a, an iPhone. But for people who have Android devices, we're going to explore some face scan technology for people who don't have access to that. Uh, and then we'll just have to kind of make that decision when we get there if we feel right. that this is high enough confidence that this is something that is accurate for your face. We don't want to send you the wrong components. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so how about people who wear glasses? Would they wear the glasses within the headset or do you offer... No. Um, tell us about how you do it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, again, similar to the big screen beyond, I think Darson's done a great job on um, optimizing certain aspects of what they... Ha d decisions that they've made for their headset. Uh, because for us, it sounds... Uh, this is where we kind of diverge from uh, the big screen beyond. For uh, the immersed visor, we want this to be something that people can wear at a coffee shop, out in public, et cetera, right? So it'll be something that people feel comfortable wearing in public. It's something that is aesthetically pleasing. That sounds weird, like a weird priority to think about for VR because historically, no one's ever <laughs> cared about what it's looked like. It's always been this bulky brick thing. But right. that's what I believe has prevented mass adoption. And not, not even just like a personal intrinsic belief, but based on all the people that I've talked to, the random superficial comment that I'll hear all the time is, yeah, but I don't want to be, I don't want to wear a brick on my head. And it sounds superficial. It's like, yeah, but you're missing the point. The experience is amazing. The people, for whatever reason, do care about not having a big bulky thing or even like a unique looking thing. Like the big screen beyond is just unique looking, right? It's, it, it makes sense for hobbyists. But when it comes to the everyday person, they, the, the only thing that we have data points on that is socially acceptable is something like sunglasses. So because the right. form factor needs to be a thin, sleek form factor that has a low profile to your face, we don't, uh, we don't want people to wear glasses under it. We'd rather them have a magnetic insert for their okay. lenses. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So people can directly order it with the device then. Simply give out prescription and you're going to send it to us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. So um, make me understand more with what kind of computer I can use it. Do I need to have a Windows PC? Do I need to have a Mac, Mac PC? Uh, tell us about compatibility. Yeah, uh, same thing as the Immersed app today. It works on Mac, PC, Linux. This is something <laughs> that I'm really excited about because I know that okay. a lot of Mac users would like to be able to use a lot of these headsets that pair with it and they can't. And so that's been a huge right. advantage even since 2017. Uh, I remember in the early days of when, um, you know, immersed uh, big screen and virtual desktop had the first versions of a screen that works wirelessly on the Oculus Go or the Samsung Gear VR. And people yeah. were like, oh, hey, how do I get this working on my Mac? And in all the Reddit threads that would talk about big screen and virtual desktop, everyone would say, oh, the only one that does that is immersed, 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 immersed. And so that gave us a position in the market that was differentiated from the others. And that's something that we want to make sure that we keep pushing forward is uh, cross compatibility. We don't want to be biased just because it's easier to develop for PC. We'd rather make sure that we think about the end user, make sure that they have an amazing experience and then work our ways, our way backwards towards the tech, build whatever tech is necessary, even as difficult as it might be just to make sure that we have an amazing user experience in the end. And that also includes Mac users. Oh, that's perfect. You know, I'm, I'm using a, a MacBook Air for, for everything. And uh, I'm, I'm looking for exactly this device that I can plug in and it just works. So x yeah. they have it, but the FOV is too small. Right? Yeah. So, so I'm and also sure one screen, that. right? They don't do multiple screens. Do they? They, do, I mean, they do. They do. Oh, they might do the sidecar. That's they right. Have, yeah, yeah. They have like three screens. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah so... it's like the FOV is just too small. It doesn't make so much sense. Yeah. So it's similar to. <laughs> Sorry, uh, x <X-Real>, but it's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need more FOV. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. Like uh, FOV is one thing. And then also because a lot of these. Um, screen or virtual screen, I guess 
screen virtualization or software emulated screen technologies out there like the Xreal or um, even Horizon Workrooms, they use Apple's Sidecar API for that. And that okay. has a limited resolution. So they can't send you 4K ah, okay. screens. The okay. reason why Immerse is able to pull that off is because we actually have approval from Apple to actually build this software. We got right. approval back in 2018 for that. So we're actually the only app on the planet that is allowed to uh, virtually spawn screens at full resolution off of Mac devices. So even if others continue to try to give you multiple screens, it, it'll give you um, the maximum resolution of what an iPad will give you. It's just ah, okay. not the same as having uh, full on screens. So, so how many screens can I then um, turn on with your device? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we actually on currently existing devices limit you to five screens because we don't want, you know, the headset to blow up or whatever. Um, but moving forward, we are experimenting <laughs> with more. Yeah. So we have proof five of concepts seems where okay, though. five seems pretty five's okay a lot. Yeah. yeah. There, there are day traders who have asked for, they want 10 screens and stuff. And right, so we've actually experimented right. with 10 screens. It works. It's just, we, 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 we so using software limit you on what your max is so that your headset doesn't overheat. But um, we're going to be running some tests on what is the actual limit that we can push the immersive visor because we are going to be um, using a split architecture on the software side so that the immersive application is actually running on your laptop. We can keep the headset extremely low compute. And that's why we're able to pull off what we can, even having onboard cameras, having so much on there and it still be such a light device, a lightweight device, taking sort of this split architecture where the host computer is um, the parent to the peripheral uh, visor. It's something that will enable us to potentially spawn 10 or more screens. So I'm excited for that. I understand most people, most people don't use that many screens, but it's just something that people like to have. <laughs> and so we don't want to lose users where we don't need to. <laughs> okay. So the connection to the computer, what kind of a port is it? USB-C, I, I suppose? One yeah, USB so... Yeah, correct. Yeah. So um, right. we are working with Intel on some uh, next gen technology for this. They just announced, for example, that Thunderbolt 5 is coming out um, and that gives you 120, 120 gigabytes per second. Uh, so the, the chipset that we're using on board our visor doesn't support that yet. Uh, however, in years to come, I, man, I'm just so excited for <laughs> what is being unlocked here because uh, okay. it's just it's just, it's never been possible before. Meaning I could not have built this device back in 2017. I had to go right. the route of being on other headsets for the past six years. And only as of this year has this thing been unlocked. And so being able to use even USB-C speeds today accomplishes our goal. But moving forward, we want to continue to have more screens, higher resolution, even better pixel density, and be able to stream that with even lower latency. And that'll only get better in years to come. Wow, yeah, looking forward to that. So there's a chip inside, but this is only used for for the six stuff tracking, right, from the cameras? Yeah, and also right. uh, being able to present the uh, lens video data per lens back to the headset from the yeah, laptop. Right. right, okay. Then, um, yeah, you, you said there's a, a battery inside so that you can use it wirelessly if you want. Right? Yeah, so it will be similar to the Apple Vision Pro where it's oh, yeah, ported. Right, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, I'm excited about it. It sounds like a device that I want to have. So it has like a 4K micro OLED, which will give, give us perfect colors, just like the big screen beyond, right? This deep Correct. legs and, and vibrant colors, super high resolution, even more resolution yeah. than the big screen beyond, which is crazy. Yeah. This is already like amazing. Yeah, when I tried, uh, so the first time I tried 4K, per, it's so crazy because, so I've tried, obviously, you know, the... Um, current generation headsets that are publicly available, like the Quest Pro, Quest 2, like, you know, about 2K per eye. Uh, it's pretty good. People work full time in it. They have no issue seeing uh, their screens and reading text, et cetera. No issue. But <laughs> right. then you go to the 2.5K per eye, and it's like, oh, wow, this is even better. And then when you get to the 4K <laughs> per eye, you're like, wow, I can't <laughs> okay. see any pixels. I can't see any pixels. Like, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Okay, I'm 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 I, I'm getting to this stage like, okay, want, I want it. So this... For me, it sounds expensive, you know, like the Bixion Beyond is, I think the Bixion Beyond is cheap at $999, honestly speaking, for what's inside. So for you, there's even more stuff inside. It has 4K screens, 6 DOF. I don't need base stations, all this stuff. There's, yeah, this battery connector. Okay, let's talk about pricing. I'm, I'm <laughs> expecting this is a bit expensive. Yeah, what's your guess? Yeah, what's your guess? Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to say. Probably um, 1,200, a bit more than the Big Screen Beyond. Gotcha. Do you want me to say it now? Are you, yeah, I, I, <laughs> are you on the well, edge of your seat? <laughs> well, I, I, I am on the edge of my seat. Tell, yeah, tell, so, tell us how expensive it is. 
Yeah. So for 4K per eye, we will be selling it for 750 bucks. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. There's a reason behind before, this. By the way, this is the first time I learned this. What? How yeah. can you pull this off? <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Yeah. If I hit yeah. one in my heart, throw it at the camera. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, so, what, what is this about? <laughs> so the, the reason why I think this is so important is because, again, this is something that wow. we want the masses to adopt. We're not taking a hit on manufacturing. Like we, this is still cheaper than what it costs to manufacture. Um, but our goal is to make money on the software side long term, right? So we are okay. not a hardware company. We are a software company. And so okay. moving forward, if we are creating hardware, so to speak, as a necessary evil, I don't like using that phrase, but it's just kind of what we have to do. And fortunately, we found out that we're actually pretty good at it <laughs> as far as like okay. the design decisions, the, the partners that we're working, we're working with behind the scenes, like Qualcomm and Intel and others who are mind blown as far as what our team is coming up with in comparison to other hardware partners that they've worked with in the past. Uh, turns out we're creating a pretty awesome device here and we've figured out creative ways <laughs> yeah, to make that sure that we can like get it. it. Yeah, we, 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 we've figured out creative ways to get this into the hands of people at scale. And uh, the goal is for us to be able to also sell this into the enterprise um, so that we can offset the costs of what the this hardware is costs for people. Cheap, cheap for yeah. enterprise, especially for enterprise, right? Yeah, if they don't yeah. need to buy several screens for the employees. Yep. Are you kidding? It'll me? be a no-brainer. Yeah, correct. The cost is mainly going to be associated to collaboration. So having like a virtual HQ or having conference rooms or uh, streaming right. screen presentation screens. Um, so a lot of the cost will be associated with that implementation, customer support, all that type of stuff, user ag access, uh, user access management dashboards, things like that. Right. So, um, there's a lot that enterprises need that consumers don't, but what that does is allows us to bring the savings back to the consumer so that consumers can just do their job of spreading the word, right. Getting excited about it, bringing awareness. And that's our cost of acquisition per customer is just, yeah, give to people for pretty much at cost of what it uh, costs to actually manufacture the device. But wow. there's one more thing. Okay, so what is it? <laughs> one thing that I'm really excited about is um, there. we are actually going to be allowing people to get um, an even cheaper device even earlier uh, if they want to down res to 2.5K per eye. So similar okay. to the big screen beyond. Uh, that's already they, great. Yeah, if they don't want the, if they're like, hey, I don't need 4K. I just need something that's better than what's available today. And I want something that's um, lighter weight than anything that's available today. You can get the 2.5k per eye for 500 bucks. What? So, yeah. Oh, come on! Yeah, I know. Wow, so you guys are killing it! Like, <laughs> yeah. like congrats, man! Yeah, wow! Thanks, man. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah, really yeah. exciting stuff. Yep. Yeah, and so I like, want, I want it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and wow. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot here. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. even more. Again, like we're trying to get as many people to be able to um, take on the savings, pass on the savings, and so we're actually going to be okay. opening up a referral program where people could actually get even further discounts on their devices if they bring more and friends and family in, right? So say, for example, if you um, if you buy the 2.5K uh, per eye device for 500 bucks and you get, we'll say, five friends and family you know, in the next year to be right. able to uh, purchase another headset, you can pretty much get your headset for nearly free. Um, and so th we'll, we'll announce all of that. You'll see. Uh, I like we're gonna... that as a YouTuber because I have yeah, some people who, <laughs> exactly, might, yeah. who, might, who might want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so we, we do want to, again, our main North Star is how do we bring uh, AR, VR to the masses, right? So the masses, unfortunately, the vast majority of my friends and family don't do VR gaming. And so, same, same here. And so because of that, they have no use for VR, AR, VR yet. And right. so if I want to bring this to the masses, I need to follow alongside their current habits, which is they use their laptops for work. They use it for entertainment. They watch movies on it. And so if I can bring them a peripheral device at as low of a cost as possible, as long as it's a very, very high quality solution, I understand, right? You know, Palmer Lucky wrote a blog post called free isn't cheap enough. I understand exactly. yeah. uh, just because the device is cheap doesn't mean that people want it. It might sit on the shelf. But if it's very, very high utility, very, very or, or usefulness, very, very high quality and it's less, less expensive, and there are more and more ways to get people involved. This is something that I really believe is going to hit the masses. And uh, we'll finally get that billion people in VR mission accomplished just to get people's feet wet. It needs to be a use case that people already do today. And I believe the approach that we're taking is going to get us there. Wow. It sounds like you have a winner on your hand. You know, what's going through my head right now 
is basically you have the same functionality. Okay, not everything like the Apple Vision Pro, right? Because it's also really about it's like working, right? It's like having these virtual screens. It's like yeah. playing Apple Arcade on that virtual screen. That is exactly what your device can do, but yeah. for a friggin' friggin' fraction of the yeah, price. a fifth of a fifth <laughs> or a seventh of the price of the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, <laughs> that is crazy. And uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, I believe for the visuals, it's going to be very similar because it's the same resolution. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you'll come to find out that we're working with a lot of the same partners right, as right. Apple is. Uh, yeah. But again, Apple, the reason why they can't, or rather, not that they can't, but they're not incentivized to make the trade-offs that we are because they're trying to create a generalized device for gaming, training, sure. entertainment, and tertiarily work. We're right. just focused on work to start with. And yes, you can still sideload things. You can mod it, whatever you want to do for your can... use case. I can yeah. also play 2D games on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything, any sort right. of anything you can put on the screen, you can put exactly. In this. Okay. Wow, this is super exciting. So, of course, everybody who's watching this video now, when, <laughs> like, when, when can we pre-order this? When is it coming? Yeah. Tell us. Yeah, uh, Tuesday, September nineteenth at noon Central Time is when we're going to open up pre-orders. Uh, wow. We're, we're, okay. On the actual page, you'll see that there's a couple of limited time only offers. Uh, some offers for things that you can only get within the first two weeks, um, certain discounts, certain add-ons, et cetera. And so um, take a look at the website, go to visor.com, V-I-S-O-R.com, kind of like a helmet visor. Um, and yeah, check out the different uh, perks. But what I will say is if you don't check it out in the first two weeks, you will miss out. So, so when I order it, then at that time, when is it going to arrive at my doorstep though? That's a good question. So um, <laughs> I'm trying to get to your doorstep ASAP. There's a lot of... Um, moving pieces behind the scenes with different manufacturing partners, et cetera. And so uh, that's why right now we have to say 2024. Uh, okay. And so it can be any point in 2024. I can't say more yet. Um, I was even having some calls this morning with some of those uh, partners that we're working with. And um, it's really exciting to see how quickly a lot of these manufacturing partners are, they're like moving mountains behind the scenes in order to make sure that they can prioritize this and get this into the hands of consumers immediately because they haven't seen a, um, messaging market fits like this quite quite like this book ever before and so because of that uh, they want to make sure that they can continue uh, getting the buzz but also that they can be the ones to capitalize on this opportunity before anyone else and right. so uh, my goal is to get into your hands as as early as possible in 2024 but there's a world in which there can be delays etc so um, our, our, again our goal is to make sure that this is a device that um, can get into the hands of users at the highest quality possible at the lowest price possible. Um, and again, this is the device that I want. Uh, and so likewise <laughs> yeah, with the Mercs, <laughs> yeah, well, well, I was going to say that, uh, the, the, the application that we built with the Merst was the, the app that we wanted and come to find out. So do hundreds of thousands of other people. Now, when it comes to this hardware device, turns out not only, not only do we want it, but now apparently millions of people want this. And so we are, we're moving mountains behind the scenes to move this up as early as possible uh, next year. But it is, I will say, I don't want to promise anything just yet sure. uh, because I can't commit to that if it turns out that there are additional complexities. Um, and you know, we're not the only ones facing a lot of those complexities. So is Apple and others, as you've read a lot of the rumors and articles online. So uh, we're kind of in the same world as Apple and uh, we're just trying to bring a device into your hands for a seventh of the price. That, that is incredible. So I believe um, the, the pre-orders are first for US only, or is it? Uh, no, it's for oh, anyone. It's, it's worldwide. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is worldwide. getting better. This is getting better. <laughs> so worldwide. everyone who's watching this video can order this on the 19th yeah. of se September yeah. at visor.com. Here you can see visor.com. And uh, well, I'm super excited about this. I'm like shocked by the price. I'm yeah. super shocked. <laughs> like, like it's cheaper than it's cheaper than the big screen beyond, and uh, yeah. this device is already super amazing, right? Yeah, and I just want to so, clarify real quick that like our goal isn't to undercut anyone on anything. Right, right. Our goal here is just, just to make it so that the most amount of people can have access to this. That it's not cost sure. prohibitive to anyone, um, because again, if there's a way that you can align incentives, meaning if Immerse can get funding or revenue from elsewhere. We will pursue those routes from those who have more access to capital, such as big enterprise companies, so that right. we can pass the savings on to consumers. Uh, and so, again, our goal is not to make as much money as possible on the hardware. Our goal is to obviously have a functioning business that's growing, getting devices into more and more people's hands while working with enterprises to see what sort of solutions can we solve for them. So uh, at the end of the day, yeah, we just don't really care about undercutting who at what or what price. For us, it's what does it cost to build this device? How do we get into as many people's hands as possible? And can that be... 
uh, uh, sustainably um, put in place in such a way that will be, become a long-term flywheel and just grow, 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 grow. So yeah, my goal is to build the product that I want. And I wanted a device that's not a couple thousand dollars for high quality. Wow, this is so exciting. Um, one last question. So people will have to decide now between the 500 version with the 2.5K and the 4K version at $750. Yep. Yep. Um, how big of a difference is it? Like, uh, yeah. really, like, 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 this is going to be the question. I know, I know people yeah. will ask me, Sebastian, which one to go for? And unfortunately, yeah. I haven't looked through it yet, but you yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us more about the difference. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's a world of a difference. I will say this, the, my guess, I don't know, I can't tell the future, but my guess is that the 2.5K per eye device will be for someone who can't afford the extra 250 bucks. Like they just barely scrape their way to even get to the $500 okay. price. Got the 2.5K, like it's still higher quality or higher resolution than anything they've tried before. And it's much more lighter weight than anything they've tried before. So that's still a, a, an amazing product. But if you can afford the extra $250, I would say, being able to see no pixels is a mind blowing thing. And I mean, I, you probably remember the moments you tried VR for the first time, something clicked that never did before that 4k per eye is another one of those moments. And if you want to experience that, I would prioritize the 750 per eye. I, I will say this very analogous to, for example, the Tesla model three versus the Tesla model S like the Tesla model three is great and it's economical for the masses. That's great. And it's usually for people who can kind of just barely go get that and afford that. But if you really want a premium vehicle that has insane power uh, and is beautiful, get the Model S. Likewise here, get the 4K per eye if you can afford it. Okay, and it's only $250 difference <laughs> rather yeah. than from the Model 3 to the Model yeah. S. Correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a 2X difference. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, there you have it. Go for the $750 uh, version. Th that's the point. That's really cool. Good to know, man. Randy, I'm I'm so excited now. You you got me so pumped up about your device, and it's so close. 19th of September. Everyone out there, go to visor.com and snatch away one of those deals. And I'm looking forward to find out about these deals that you have there in store for us. So super super exciting, Randy. Thank you so much for this world exclusive launch uh, unveiling interview here on Emmer TV. I hope that you enjoyed it as well. I did. Totally enjoy it, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. So, so yep. thanks for that. And, um, and a small sneak yeah. peek. Oh, what? Okay, <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I totally forgot that, about. Like, show it to us. Yes, there it was. That, oh, that's um, that's all I'm going to show you for now. I'm sorry, but <laughs> okay. it's an amazing device. You will see more. Uh, you'll see actually uh, Intel, his C the CEO, actually show it on stage as well. Uh, at their okay. annual conference. Okay. So you know what? Be really exciting. Let, let me let me put you there and we need it once more now. Like All right, one. once more. All right. Once more. This is the actual device. The, oh uh, my god. I don't know if it's focusing, but yeah, it's kind of not focusing. It's focused on me. There I, we go. Yeah, okay. Get, get oh, the same as my oh face. Oh my yeah. goodness. Oh yeah. my goodness. This it's looks a, it looks so cool. Yeah. It, it, it looks, will also it will also come with um, a strap as well. The reason why we even allow stems is because the masses who don't use VR don't know that stems are just not good for you uh, for long term usage. It'll work for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, but uh, and you can wear it at a coffee shop. But once you get comfortable using it and you realize how amazing the use case is, this actually does pop off and you can actually put a, stra a strap that actually comes around with it. Oh, but, my goodness. It's like, yeah, you'll see, it's like the, you'll see a lot more. Well, very future soon. sunglasses, future sunglasses. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, it's not just sunglasses like it is. It, it actually yeah, is course, something that has lenses in it. But you'll yeah, see the actual uh, you'll see the actual footage on the trailers and all the promos. But that's all I'll show you for now. But where does the thing have its cameras? I totally didn't see any cameras. There. Yeah. So so there... you'll see this. Actually okay. Pops off. Wow. OK. Yep. OK. It magnetically attaches. So yeah. OK. We, we do make sure that uh, aesthetics matter. We do care about the fact that it has six degrees of freedom tracking, high color pass through. We are considering a device that optimizes for all use cases, functionality, aesthetics, and comfort. Um, Renji, shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we yeah. will very soon. <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. okay. Renji, thank you so much for this interview. And all the people out there, I really hope that you're as fired up as, as I am right now. Don't forget visor.com on the 19th of September. You can pre-order one of those beauties. Uh, don't forget to buy the more expensive version. It's going to be better, like Renji said. And yeah, just thank you so much. Give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it now, let us know in the comment section, what are your thoughts about the Immersed Visor? Shut up and take my money. Please write it into the comment section if you feel like that. Reggie, thanks again. 
And that is everything that we got for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up and see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye. Thanks so much.